Every so often, you find a movie or a TV show which drops out of the blue and completely boggles your mind. And such was the case for Netflix show Squid Game, a South Korean survival thriller that grips you from the very first episode, which tells a very compelling and emotional story about human nature when they are put in life-threatening situations. The show revolves around a bunch of people who are provided with an opportunity to earn a huge sum of money just when their lives had completely hit rock bottom. All they have to do is participate in a series of games and win. And you might be thinking, come on man, we have heard and seen enough reviews already. Rest assured, I'm not really here today to talk about Squid Game. I'm here to talk about another gem of a show which you might have missed. The show called Alice in Borderland. Another live-action depiction by Netflix of the Japanese suspense manga series written and illustrated by Haro Aso. Alice in Borderland features around a survival game where players are put into an alternate world where the usual civil rules of society no longer apply. The show centers around a bored young man named Ryohei Arisu who has no aim in life and spends most of his time at home gaming. He is often compared to his younger brother by his father, resulting in his lack of self-confidence and pent-up frustration. Though he is shamed for being dumb, he is actually quite intelligent and is seen solving rather complicated gaming puzzles. Regardless of his father, he is able to enjoy life and forget all of his worries when he is with his two best friends, Chota Segawa, who is portrayed as a shy and mild-mannered office worker, and Daikichi Karube, who is the bad boy of the trio and quite a ladies' man. Arisu would often daydream and wish that he and his friends would go far away from reality, from his overly demanding father and stuck-up younger brother. His wish comes true during one of their usual goof-off sessions. While hiding from the cops in a public restroom, there is a power outage where even their phone stops working. As they emerge from the restroom, they find themselves in an alternate post-apocalyptic Tokyo. As they try to make sense out of this weird phenomena, the sun sets and the part of the city lights up, directing them to a game arena. Once they enter the arena, they are provided with smartphones that deliver instructions for the game at hand. They quickly realize their lives depend on winning this elaborate and brutal, messed up games. Much like Game of Thrones, when you play, you either win or you die. Games are mainly held every night after sundown. Each game comes with a particular playing card. Win the game and the player is issued a visa. It's a sort of a grace period wherein they don't have to compete for a certain number of days to survive. However, they have to enter again and win additional games before their days expire. Otherwise, a laser from the sky shoots them dead when they run out of time. There are four types of games and difficulty is determined by the number on the card. Spades are the games that require physical strength. Diamonds are the games that require wit and intelligence. Clubs are the games where teamwork is required and hearts, well, Hearts are the cruelest games of all, since they are psychological games that involve emotional manipulation and betrayal. You can win a game of hearts, but that victory will come at a tremendous cost, and it might just break you down entirely. Much of the pleasure and dramatic tension of Alice in Borderland arises from the sheer sadistic ingenuity of the games. It gives us vibes of different movies and animes like Saw, Sword Art Online, Walking Dead, all patched up together. Another strength of the show would be the many different colorful characters, each with their own compelling backstories. The better to break the viewer's hearts should one of them eventually lose a game. There's Yuzuha Usagi, a young woman who is a mountain climber with excellent survival skills who saves Arisu after he is completely broken down and given up on life after one of the herds came. Then there is Shuntaro Chishia, also known as Cheshire, who is an elusive and mysterious guy 
who has his own methods of winning the games to get back to the real world, similar to the cat from Alice in Wonderland. Assisting him is Hikari Kuina, who is a former clerk at a clothing store with a tragic past and a kick-ass martial arts training. There's a version of Mad Hatter, known simply as the Hatter, who sets up a collective of survivors in a resort dubbed The Beach, with the aim of cooperating to play enough games to collect all the cards in the deck, which is rumored to be the only way to escape from this world. And there's a katana-wielding tattoo psycho known as The Last Boss, who found the real world all too mundane as society always shunned on people who actually showed real human nature. If you have been a fan of manga and have been watching animes for a quite a long time, you will quickly realize how these characters fit into that world. It reminds me of the dialogue from Enter the Dragon. Man, you come right out of a comic book. The pacing of the show is unabating, with a chock full of unexpected twists and surprises, plus a few well-placed moments of downtime to give viewers a chance to catch their breath now and then. The eight episodes are incredibly addictive and no doubt you will probably find yourself blasting through this in a couple of hours. The stakes keeps rising all the way through to the finale, which wraps up a bunch of narrative threads while setting up a possible second season. The remaining players level up to the next stage, but we still have no idea of the identity of the master or masters behind these games. It's difficult to explain how much I liked Alice in Borderland. It has everything from a post-apocalyptic theme to a fast-paced action and outrageously brutal set pieces based on the game's premise that surprises us at every turn. And how far the people are willing to go to survive if you push them hard enough. I can't tell how refreshing it is to see characters that feel believable as opposed to the one-dimensional clowns masquerading as people as you see in Hollywood nowadays. All in all, Alice in Borderland is one of those very rare shows, and more so a live-action depiction by Netflix, which completely shoves aside all the stale, formulaic, preachy, woke drivel that are being spewed by the Western studios for the past few years. And if all is good with the virus who must not be named, the second season is out for release in December this year, and I'm pretty excited about it. Anyways, that's all I have for today. Let me know what you think. Are you going to watch it? Have you already watched it? If you have, what do you think about the show and what other shows you find impressive enough? Let me know your views in the comment section down below. And if you liked my video, and want to see more videos like this, let me know about that as well. And I thank you for watching this far. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel for more content. As for now, this is your boy Shyan signing off. Sayonara.